Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Base Paths and Brewskies. Today is episode 13, a little late recording, episode 13 and 14. Uh, just to give you a little reference, today is Monday the 15th. Uh, the Red Series was last Tuesday through supposed to be... Sorry, Monday through last, supposed to be Thursday, ended up getting cut short due to the rain delay. Um, this weekend, they played the Orioles. I'll talk about that in the next episode, but... Anyway, let's talk about it again. The Brewers win again in this series. You know, at this point in time, Brewers are 6-2. and two. Um you know, kind of been on a roll to start the season, really haven't had many hiccups. Uh, first, we'll start about we'll, we'll start by talking about the BP. Uh, I'm not currently drinking it. However, I did have one this weekend with dinner, a Pearl Street Brewery. So that's actually from uh, downtown La Crosse, where I currently reside. Um, the downtown Brown Ale, the DTB, fantastic beer. I had it with a a comfort bowl at David Ray's over in on Alaska. It was, it was pretty delicious meal. And this definitely was opened my eyes to how good Pearl street brewing is. So I'm going to have to make some stops down there more in the future for sure. The first game of the series, uh, kind of a shootout game, 10 to eight. Uh, okay. So this is all off memory. Uh, the Brewers kind of went down big early. I want to say it was like nine to one, nine to two, something like that. Ended up making the comeback, I believe, to like nine eight, and then the Reds pulled away one ten to eight. So, little jump into the the box score here a little bit. Um, I think obviously pitching Aaron Ashby, um, really he didn't pitch as bad as maybe the line would say. But I definitely think there's a lot of growth to have from him still. Uh, you know, two walks, he gave up the home run. He isn't throwing as hard as he was before all the injury problems, um, you know, the shoulder stuff. Um, definitely going to have to find his traction back in the big leagues again once he's back. I believe he was optioned back down to AAA. So um, hopefully we'll see him again soon here. Otherwise, I mean, the bullpen did a decent job. Bukowskis obviously came in a I believe had inherited runners, um, gave up a run. Piomps was kind of back to being Piomps shut down, shut down the game a bit there. Hudson was all right. And, uh, Wilson did pretty good too. It looks like from the box, I didn't really get to catch much of this game last week. I was really busy for reference with a, a human anatomy exam. So, uh, hopefully that score will come back. Not terrible. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Pretty happy to have it over with, but uh, almost done. Almost graduating from from a uh, University of Wisconsin Lacrosse here, so pretty excited. Um. Anyway, Craft Brew Player of the Game. I had Bryce Terang. Um. Just it, it kind of this season been sparking rallies in general. Um. At this point, one dotting his OPS for. You know, driving in four runs in the eight hole is a huge thing to have for your team. And he's just such a threat on the base paths as well, scoring two runs himself. So really just when we're scoring runs, it seems to be with Bryce involved. And that's kind of why I included him there. But let's move on to game two. This was one game that I actually did get to catch. Um, and nine to five uh, Brewers win in Cincinnati. Uh, this game was this was a fun one to watch. Joe Ross pitched decent, you know, seven strikeouts, solid number. Um, he, you know, and then the bullpen came in, did all right. Uh, I think a lot of the runs against Ross, uh, you know, weren't weren't terrible, you know, ways to give up runs. Uh, he was locating a lot better than he did in his first start, and just the length he went with six and a third was was really nice to see as well. Uh, so that's why he got a uh, craft brew player of the game along with Christian Yelich, who he has just been on a tear to start the season. I believe had a home run this game, uh, two hits though, three RBI also got on base via the walk. Um, just really, I mean, he looks like MVP Yelich again. He looks pretty incredible. Uh, he's hitting the ball really hard. He's kind of along with the rest of our team. I know I'm kind of speaking into the future a little bit, but one of the top offenses in baseball right now, uh, with pretty any, pretty much any major stat, I mean, average with runners in scoring position, um, OPS, some of the you know determining factors of whether or not your team is going to be good offensively is 
a lot of it's going in our favor, so that's really good to see. But um, obviously, uh, Paguero did okay pitching. Hudson uh, was solid. Uribe was, you know, he actually pitched pretty good. I was pretty happy to see the three strikeouts um, from him not giving up a run. He has had trouble, obviously, with letting people on base. And, you know, the funny thing to me is you would assume him to be as, you know, this dominating strikeout kind of guy, which uh, to this point in his career really hasn't been. He's, you know, that's not necessarily been his game. And I, I liked what I believe it was. Who was it on Brewers All Access? Um, I can't remember who it was. But came on and basically said, a uh, former professional pitcher came on and basically said, you know, having stuff is one thing, but learning how to strike guys out is another. And I think that's a big thing for Abner. Um, and that'll kind of come into play later on when I talk about the Orioles series next episode uh, is just getting him experience in times and letting him figure himself out as a pitcher and not necessarily be worried about, you know, winning games, saving games constantly. Uh, so I think that'll help his development for sure. But good to see from him with a solid game like that. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. I know in this game, I believe it was Will Benson, uh, center fielder for the Reds, kind of tried to take out Jake Bowers a little bit. There was a play, I don't know if it was drop third strike or if it was just kind of a uh, comebacker, what, what the situation was, but... Oh, yeah, it was uh, Benson thought he foul tipped it and he didn't. And it was, you know, a drop third strike. And he kind of tried to he ran way out of the baseline into play and almost took out Bowers. And I thought that was kind of it kind of got skipped past a little bit. But I was a little shocked about like a move like that. And I don't know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see, you know, him get hit in the future with a pitch or, some, you know, some kind of retaliation from the team. But Anyway, let's let's kind of cruise through here to game three. Brewers had a dominating seven to two victory. Didn't get to watch this game, which I was kind of upset about because Wade Miley uh, did Wade Miley things. He faced off against you know the young phenom pitcher Hunter Green, uh, flame throwing kind of guy. Uh, he did come in and strike out nine guys. That's his game. But he also, I mean, look at the amount of runs he gave up six so i mean i'd rather take wade miley striking out nobody and pitching four solid innings giving up one run but i mean he was just locating his stuff better uh than hunter green and it, it showed in the box score for sure but anyway with the lineup uh churio had a decent game um William Contreras, I'll kind of talk about, has just been on a roll this season in general. Uh, one of the top average guys in the league, which I know average isn't stressed as much anymore as being a big stat, but I still think it's a good way to measure, you know, at a quick glance, how good the hitter's been. Um, Yelich continuing to dominate. Perkins has been pretty solid in center field, and I think he's making a good argument for himself as to why he could be a guy that stays on the roster. Um with so much turnover in the outfield with like, uh, you know, Garrett Mitchell's injury, Joey Weimer, uh, kind of coming up later in the Orioles series here with Yelich being injured. And I think Perkins is a guy who's really, um, making a strong case for himself as to why he could still be on the team with his fielding ability and his hitting is really kind of coming together this season so far. Um, uh, current day on monday the 15th he's hitting 385 um and yeah it's i mean he's a guy who he squared a bunt and <laughs> kind of bounced one debatably was foul ended up being called foul next swing hits a home run so i mean that doesn't get much better than that but and he's also a switch hitter which just gives you a little more more ability to you know make an everyday lineup but not to mention his speed also, just wanted to quick mention Bryce Terang, just continuing to really tear it up here early this season. Uh, his fielding was never in question. His speed is certainly never in question. Uh, obviously, the hitting was something that was a big question mark coming into this season, and he's really uh, you know, shown the quantum leap. I know that phrase has been thrown around so much now with Pat Murphy saying that about Terang's uh, expectations this season, but... I mean, it's true. He's really he's really improved a lot, and and you can tell that he's put in a lot of work with his swing. He's just got such a better approach. Um, he looks so comfortable, uh, you know, 
choking up on the bat, taking solid compact swings and just trying to put the ball in play. He's got the speed to be a hitter like that can do that. And I mean, obviously as of now, he's good in the order where, you know, where he is, but if he continues hitting this way, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him, you know, hitting, I don't know about lead off, but potentially like a lead off spot or at least just getting moved up in the order. So could always be something, but I always like the nine hitters being a secondary lead off guy anyway, because they're the ones who hit before, you know, he's up then lead off and then usually Contreras Yelich. So if he's a guy who's getting on base pretty consistently at, in the nine hole as well, it's not that much different than lead off once the game gets going. So, but yeah, that was a uh, kind of my little take on this game. We'll move on. Game four was obviously postponed. It's rescheduled to be a double header. I believe the first game of two on August 30th at 1140 AM. So, uh, I yeah, probably won't remember that in August. I'll be a day or two into PT school at that point. So that's kind of crazy to think, but anyway, let's talk about the series awards. Christian Yelich has won the BNB MVP and the barrel blaster award. Just really showing what it means to be a brewer hitting the ball hard, playing with hustle. Um, his fieldings looked just even more locked in his approach at the plate. He looks a little more comfortable, a little more upright, uh, a lot less vertical movement in his swing, which has kind of allowed him, I think, to hit that higher pitch and, uh, you know, drive balls that are a little higher in the zone and, and not hitting so much on the ground like we'd seen in, you know, 2021, 2022. So I'm really happy with that. And the crafty pitcher was Wade Miley. It was just nice seeing him pitch for the Brewers again. Uh, it's always nice. I think crafty is like certainly a great way to describe Wade Miley. He's just uh very in tune with what he's got as a pitcher um he knows how to attack hitters and he just knows how to get outs without giving up runs and that's really what a pitcher is about so the crafty pitcher uh goes to wade miley the mr consistent obviously mr william Contreras. uh every day when he's coming up to bat you can expect at least a one you know solid swing out of him on a ball uh, putting a ball in play and you know one is the bare minimum he's hitting the ball hard constantly this season he's been a stud behind the plate as a backstop uh maybe one or two little things we've seen uh, you know small little mistakes as a catcher but i mean that's part of the game i mean he's been such a solid uh framing kind of guy i know the metrics really support him with framing uh, he look. You can tell in game he steals a lot of strikes, especially for some of our relievers um, who maybe need the extra help. And it's looked great. And not to mention, he just hasn't taken a day off. I mean, he's as of now, which is speaking into the future a little bit past this series, but he has not. He has not rested. He's either caught or DH'd every game. And you know, he basically responds to if he's going to rest with. Well, I'll rest on the next rest day. So, you know, whenever the team rests, he rests. When the team plays, he plays. And I love that attitude uh, from my catcher, especially. So that's kind of the quick, the awards for the series. We'll move on to our B&B trivia, which last episode's answer was the Seattle Pilots. Is the, the Brewers were for one season the Seattle Pirates, and 54 years after that have now been the Milwaukee Brewers. But one season as the pilots kind of a cool little fact and this week's bnb trivia was who's the first brewer to win an mvp award answers are a robin yount b raleigh fingers c ryan braun or d paul molitor it was not christian yelich i'll give you that up next obviously the orioles uh, eight and four Orioles, eight and three Brewers were going to Baltimore to play in that giant stadium at Cad uh, Camden Yard. So super excited to talk about that one. Is it's already happened in in real life, and by the time this is released, so um, yeah, I'm super excited to look more into that series as well. That was a really cool series. Again, didn't get to watch too much. Um, it was like the first time in Wisconsin that it stayed above like 70 degrees for an extended, you know, couple of hours and was nice and sunny. So I was outside hiking pretty much all weekend and, you know, not sitting inside. So I didn't really get to watch much of the Brewers, sadly. But, uh, you know, I assume that w as the more nice days come, you know, I'll be I'll, I'll be able to resist going outside a little more. But if you're from Wisconsin, you totally understand what I'm talking about. 
And for the BNB beer requests, if you have any beers you've been dying to try, if you have a go-to beer that I need to try, comment or reach out on any of the socials listed below with what I should drink next. Uh, Pearl Street Brewery, again, great beer I had at David Ray's. I'm going to have to go down there and look and see what else they got, potentially feature another one of those on an episode coming up here. So super excited to try some more of those. And as always, thank you for listening and have a good rest of your day. Go Brewers.